Lars and James are geniuses. They're also assholes. They like to with people's brains with their music. And here's how. Metallica has so far released 10 studio albums. Now that's a lot of music and they've definitely had to try some new stuff many, many times. They have always been down to experiment and innovate. They've been down to f with your head every now and then as well. There are some Metallica songs on which there are certain moments that are confusing as hell. They are misleading to the listener's ear. And today we're looking at eight times Metallica confused us with their songs. Number one, fight fire with fire. No, they weren't so musically sophisticated on Kill 'Em All. Anyway, there's actually nothing about the song. It's just where the cymbals hit at the beginning and the very high tempo, which forces you to follow the snare instead of the kick. Speaking of which, I also think the drum mixing and the low volume of the kick play a factor here. <laughs> The symbols at the beginning make it sound like this. But it's in fact like this. Number two, Ride the Lightning. This one's genius and it's the reason why Lars counts to three instead of four when they play live. When the toms hit, they are not the first beat, but the fourth. When James and Kirk play the harmony, the C and G are the first beat. This is the wrong way to play it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. See how the count is, is incorrect now? Here's the correct way to play it. Now it's correct. Number three, Trapped Under Ice. Again, like on Fight Fire with Fire, there's the poor drum mixing. Also this time, there's inconsistent tempo. The only way to hear this one correctly is to follow the guitar riff, which goes like this. One, two, three, four. Number four, Master of Puppets. Gotta love it when a band makes you think they're playing in 28 over 64, but it's just four over four the clean interlude riff from Master of Puppets. Once again, it's Lars doing his thing. Somehow, Lars makes you think he's starting a new bar every time he hits the cymbals. Thanks, Lars. Count with me. One, two, three, four. Number five, Leper Messiah. The pre-count in Leper Messiah is 100% incorrect and unnecessary. He counts to five to start a song that's in four over four. What the And good luck if you try to count the intro in five over four to see if it's counting correctly or not. Number six, Blackened. Oh yeah, this one. Blackened was the most difficult song for me to follow when I was younger. And again, it's the snare. You know this riff. The snare makes you think it starts on the high E, while in fact it starts on the lower one. But again, one of the most difficult things you'll ever do is try to keep up with this song. And we're not done yet. There's also the part after the solo, aka the post-solo treatment. I used to think there was a mistake here. Turned out the mistake was here. At the end of the solo, Lars hit the tom and snare 17 times, not 16. At the 17th time, which is actually the first time in a new bar, the main riff is played again. But the new beat starts on the high E, not the low one. So now you think it's played like this. And then this happens. Because the 17th beat is not a 17th beat. It's the first one in a new bar. F*** you, Lars. Number seven, and justice for all. The very next track. I will not talk about it today though. Instead, I'm gonna address it in a future video for a very specific reason. Skip into number eight. And the last one we're gonna talk about today, Eye of the Beholder. And this one's really simple. You know how the song fades in. I once thought the riff was like this. But then when the drum beat started, I realized it was the other way. That's all for today, but I am gonna make a part two video 
because there are many, many more confusing Metallica songs to talk about. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like the video, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get more and more subscribers. Let me turn this down, and I'll see you next time.